In this movie, we'll learn how to handle and display form errors. We won't talk about data validation until the next chapter. We, we can start by using a very simple validation. We'll add validates presence of name to our subject model. That will require that a subject has some value for the name attribute or else Rails won't allow it to be saved to the database. Not only will the save or update fail, but Rails will add an error to object.errors, which is an array-like structure for holding any validation errors. Remember that in our controller, after a save or update fails, we are re-rendering the form to give the user a chance to fix the problems and try again. We'll also have access to object.errors on that form, and we can use it to display information about what problems need fixing. Without the display of those errors, the user will be left wondering why they're seeing the form again. There are a few useful methods that we can use for working with errors. There's object.errors.clear, which would clear all of the errors. We don't normally need to do that. Rails clears them on each and every request, so they always start over and start fresh with no errors at the beginning of the request response cycle. We only use clear if we want to forcibly clear them after that point. Object.errors.size, will tell us how many of the errors there are. Object.errors.each will allow us to iterate through the errors that are present, and it provides the attribute name that received the error and a fragment of a sentence about what went wrong. For example, the message might be, can't be blank. The attribute is a symbol, the lowercase underscore version of the attribute. For example, colon name. Errors.full messages returns complete sentences that describe the error, basically taking the attribute and the message and building a proper sentence with proper capitalization out of them. For example, name can't be blank. It basically saves you the trouble of constructing this sentence yourself. There are two ways to communicate form errors. You can either list them at the top of the page above the form, or you can print and highlight errors with each form input. Often, you're going to use some combination of the two. And as you'll see, some of the Rails helpers that we've been learning about will help with the second one of those, highlighting the forms that have problems. Rails used to have a helper for displaying error messages above the form as well. It was called error messages for. The problem was that it output a large section of HTML and there was no way to customize that HTML. In Rails version three, it was removed, but we can and should write our own version of that as a replacement. We'll put it in a partial and then we'll write a custom helper method to render that partial and display the errors on each of our forms. Let's try working with form errors in our simple CMS application. Let's start by adding that very simple validation to subject so that we will get some saves that fail and will return errors to us. So we'll go into model subject.rb and right after has many pages, let's add validates presence of name. Make sure that you spell it correctly. Validates is plural, underscore presence, underscore of, and then a space, and then colon name. Now that will ensure that the subject has to have a name value or it won't be allowed to be created or updated. Let's save that file and close it. And let's just demonstrate how that works before we start adding our error display. Go into the root of your Rails application and launch the server. Then we'll open up Firefox, local host 3000 subjects. And let's try it by just going to our third subject here and clicking edit. And let's just take the name away. Just remove the name and click update subject. Now it may look like nothing changed, but it did actually submit the form. You can try it a couple of times if you want to see it. You can actually watch the log scroll by and see that something is happening. And the URL changed. We're no longer on edit slash four, we're on update slash four. It did attempt to update it, but the user didn't get any feedback telling them what went wrong. So it's a kind of a mystifying user experience if you don't display the errors in some way. Let's fix that by writing our custom error messages for. So we'll do that by going into our views and I'm gonna create a new directory in the views. You might already have it. In Rails version three, it would create this folder for you. By default, it was called application. And this is the place where you would put all of your common partials that other views would be using. So that's what I'm gonna use this application folder for. It's very helpful to have. Other people create one with a different name. They call it shared or they call it common. It's up to you what you name it. But application is one of the most common names. And inside application, I'm also gonna create a new file. And I'm just gonna save that file before I type anything in it. And I'm gonna call it underscore error underscore messages dot html dot erb. You wanna make sure you're saving that in that application directory we just created. There we go, we see it here. And into that file, I'm gonna paste some html. You can pause the movie if you wanna copy this down. 
the HTML is, starts with an if statement, if it has an object, and if the object error's size is greater than zero. So if we do have some errors on this object, then we'll display this object error HTML. It's a div with an ID error explanation that'll allow us to target it and style it with our CSS. And then it's gonna have an H2 with a message that's going to be a pluralization of the number of errors that it has. So it's again using errors.size with the word error. So it'll either say one error prohibited this record from being saved, or it'll say four errors prohibited this record from being saved. Then it'll say there were problems with the following fields, and then it will list the full messages for each of the errors that it received. So each one of those will be listed inside li tags. Now this gives us the HTML for it, but it's not a very convenient way to call this. We'll have to render the partial each and every time. To make that easier, I'm gonna add a custom helper, and I'm gonna do it inside application helper. Again, application helper is the place to put helpers that everyone should have access to, and they're gonna be used by all sorts of different views. And in there, I'm just gonna create a new method. I'm gonna call it error messages for, and that's the exact same name that the old Rails method used to have. It's not a coincidence. I'm calling it the exact same name. Error messages for, we're gonna pass in an object to it. And then all this method is gonna do is render that partial for us. Render partial application and then error messages. And we're also gonna to need to give it that variable that it needs. So we're gonna have locals. We'll pass in a value for object that value will just simply be the object that was passed in here. So this object will be passed along to this partial so that it can use it as object. Don't let the fact that my line is breaking here confuse you. That colon actually goes in front of the word object. All right, so let's save it. And now we can call error messages for object in our different templates. So in subjects, on the form, let's add it to the top of the page. So we'll put ERB tags. And then we're not gonna pass in object, we're gonna pass in the actual object. This is the subject, so that's what we're gonna pass in. And then we can do that same thing at the top of our pages. In this case, it'll be page. So error messages for the page and the top of our sections. Error messages for section. All right, let's save it. Let's make sure these all look good. Make sure I've closed all my ERB tags. And all right, let's try it out. Let's go back over here to Firefox and let's click back to list just to start fresh. Third subject, we'll click edit, take away the name, click edit, update subject. One error prohibited this record from being saved. There are problems with the following fields. Name can't be blank. So now we're displaying the errors at the top of the page and we'd get a list of all the errors. If there were 20 errors, we would see a list of all of them. I also mentioned that Rails helpers will assist you with marking the fields that have errors as well. Let's view source and let's see what's going on there. If we view page source, let's skip down below our error explanation, and you'll see that right here, for this label for subject name, it wrapped it inside a div tag called field underscore with underscore errors. And it did the same thing for the input itself. So both of those got wrapped inside field with errors. Rails does that for us automatically. Notice that's not listed for position, right? Only ones that got errors get wrapped inside that div tag. That allows us to style it. Let's just go to our style sheet real quick. And we'll look here at admin.css. You can see I've got some error code here already. I misnamed it though. It's field with errors here in my code. And Rails is now has changed and it's outputting field with underscore errors. So it's an underscore version instead of the capitalization version that it used to use. And while we're here, let's just change it so that it has the label color. Let's use the same color, but let's do a border around the input. So border, one pixel, solid, and that same red color. Let's save it. And let's go back and let's just try it again to see how those show up. Let's just hit update subject again. And notice this time it turned name red and put a red border around the field itself. This is a common way to display errors in Rails, but it's not the only way. You can use these methods and customize them for your own needs. For example, you might want the error message to display next to the name so that it tells you right over here to the side that there's a problem, or maybe it's above the field that you want to display it. Instead of having a border around it, you could turn the whole field a different color, or you could add some, some extra HTML that appears after it. 
All those kinds of things are possible by using the various helper methods that Rails gives you for displaying form errors.